Podcast.com for more great podcasts. Welcome to Dig on America, where we speak truth to power. Every week, we give you the dig on how American history, policies, and media created the social and political issues we face today. DOA is independent media supported by listeners, but they'll tell you we're just fake news, deep state propaganda, funded by George Soros, the Clinton Foundation, BLM Marxists, and... Uh, Buster Douglas. Once former heavyweight champion, or now funding this little disruptor that could. The Hawkins National Laboratory. <laughs> the future is now. There you go. Oh, Jeffrey, you got one? Can you can you can you wing it? Oh man, I didn't know that I was going to be on a uh, by the uh, um, the Wayne Gretzky Foundation for the. <laughs> performing performance of the political history <laughs> hour that's right we are getting those canadian dollars folks <laughs> that's where they're worth money. 83 cents and we love every <laughs> one of them <laughs> we have to work that just shows we're willing to work a little bit harder than everybody else because uh, it, it, some bucks da- don't really add up you're always dancing the dance for every loony baby three steps forward only two back only, only two. Th- wow okay so we we're are, doing better you know what i think it's because dutch isn't here this week yes and dutch isn't here on dig on america hello everybody it's mikey famine here with dutch haas and attorney anna hey guys all right uh enough from them no none of them are here uh people are traveling dealing with injury uh and babysitters and stuff like that so hopefully they'll all pop in uh, for the second part of the show, welcome everybody who is on Twitch and YouTube and Facebook and maybe Twitter. I think not Twitter. I don't think sure. Twitter. Um, but I want everyone to make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And also, um, Sunday, you can check out Lauren's show. You got us on Wednesdays um, for Leftist Late Night. Uh, Attorney Anna show is coming up. Breaking Barriers is already out. We got lots of stuff. The The network is growing. So that means go to patreon.com and give us all your cash or I will stop giving the dog treats. I mean it this time. Don't do that. Don't do that. I will. I will never say he is a good boy again. He's such a good boy. He's always a good boy. And you're making him not know that. He'll never know. I'll tell tell the cat in front of him that the cat is a good boy. Cats are not good people. They're not. Exactly. And that's. What will happen if you don't go to uh, patreon.com slash dig on America and give me your uh, PPP loan money? Look, we, we've already had Biden uh, uh, forgive a, a portion of student loans. Oh, so what you guys better are cat- way to celebrate that than give that money $10,000. Yes. When Biden cuts you that check. But it's not Sign the back of it's it. Not a check, and then it's, send it it's to lowering us. Lowering your value uh, that's being held by whatever lender you had. Oh, and yeah. if you were a Pell Grant recipient, it can be up to twenty thousand. And you know what? I, I, I think that's a really great place. We know that that takes out about forty-five percent of people that have any student loan debt in this. This was really yeah. a wise thing that Biden did. Would we like more? Sure. But this is really a, a great equalizer. It's a terrific plan that the president has. I mean, you know when, what? When, Jeff, when you speak like you know a thing or two about politics. Um, Jeff, I'm going to give we're going to give you center stage, actually. Tell us all about you. And, and for all you audio listeners, this is Jeffrey Powell. Jeffrey, tell them all about you. Sure. Hey, I am Jeffrey Powell. I am running for secretary of state in the state of North Dakota. Uh, I am a 30 year educator. I work as a dean of students at a small university that's part of the university system here in North Dakota. Um, I have a question. What do you want to know? I have a question. Um, What um, what other grades did you teach or like so many at this point? Go, Doug. I have taught master's level classes and have taught a few undergrad classes as adjunct, but I've never actually been a grade school teacher. Um, I have a PhD in counseling. Um, I I, I have always known that I wanted to work in a university setting. And so um, 
you know, the K-12 thing is, uh, you know, God, people, uh, hard to not admire those. And certainly I, I have friends that are in that circle um, as an educator, but uh, I have never had an actual classroom as a, as a K-12 instructor. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. Like, I want people to put down some cash to be well, here. I'm not you know, we, we're really seeing, we're seeing, we're seeing school okay. after school. We're seeing state after state having trouble filling teachers' jobs. And you know what yeah. helps fill teachers' jobs is actually treating them like professionals, both in terms of the decisions they get to make and the money that they're going to make. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. And, I mean, and especially with now, especially in uh, red states, they're all like, oh, and now we're going to arm the teachers. Like, okay, so you want them to be John Wick. Uh, teach your kids Spanish and then do what else now? Like you already don't pay them. And now no, you no, want no, them no. to be Mikey, Mikey, red technician. state, red states do not want their kids knowing Spanish. Okay. This is an <laughs> English country. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. They didn't, <laughs> I can't even think of another like topic. Just Jim. <laughs> what do I kids guess? learn these days? <laughs> what, are, what are you guys doing? What are you doing? Math? We, we add so, uh, Jeff, what uh, what inspired you as an educator to decide that you wanted to be running for secretary of state? Well, I did my dissertation work um, in 2002, 2003. And you may recall that that was about a time when a president decided that we needed to get involved in a war that we really didn't need to be involved in. And so I was able to interview a number of students who were political science majors at the time. And I came to some understanding. My, my dissertation topic is about how these students decided to be politically active. So I have always cared about politics. I, you know, I, I tell a story in my dissertation about my mom taking me to vote when she was when I was in fourth or fifth grade, um, you know, kind of that hometown experience. Illegal um, voter. It, it's always been something. Well, it's always been something I've loved. And so as I'm meeting with these college students in 2002, 2003 in Bangor, Maine, and they're showing up Saturday after Saturday to protest in front of the federal building because George Bush is trying to start the war. It gives me a, um, um, there's back. no ghost. It's actually, uh, it's a <laughs> dog. Um, it gave me a chance to really wrap myself around this desire to understand how politics affects our life. And I mean, that's really the mission that you guys have in terms of the podcast is how does history affect, how does politics affect so yeah. many parts of our life? And so um, I'm a, I'm a county district chair here in my hometown. I, I care about politics. And so when, um, when all of this big lie stuff really started up, helped us to uh, understand just how devastating the elections are going to be if we don't have people that step up and stand in and make sure that uh, the big lie stuff, that the electoral integrity stuff that mm -hmm. the other side is throwing out, if, if somebody's not standing up against it, then they're going to they're gonna get to run the field without even being contested. I like it. I like it. And that's a, a good answer. That's a that's a good answer for a politician. But here's the real questions. You are now in the four down territory. Fourth down territory. Welcome to Dig on America Red Zone. Bum, 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 bum. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. <laughs> oh, I need to I could totally make a remix. Of, I won't. The NFL is very litigious. I don't know if I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to mess with that one. Mikey, you don't you don't need that heat. I don't mess with I don't mess with the NBA. I don't mess with the mouse. <laughs> and, uh, and I don't mess with Sony. They're you can very... fuck with the NHL though. No one cares. Yeah, no one's no, it's fine. They're drunk. They're not they don't they're, care. They're all drunk and Canadian. What are you <laughs> saying, eh? Put me put put me in quotes. I will have that on a t-shirt. The <laughs> NHL, they're all drunk and Canadian. <laughs> I'll wear that. Dutch, get on it. Dutch is head of <laughs> head of a uh, merch department. All right. So we're gonna ask you four questions. You're gonna give us four answers, and your election, your it, it, it rides on a knife's edge. Great. And my first question is when you were younger, what was your favorite piece of like playground equipment? I remember the monkey bars from my grammar school playground. I don't know that they even put mon monkey bars on playgrounds anymore. Dangerous. Um, well, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the opportunity, but uh, man, I, I, I probably spent two thirds of every one of my recesses in kindergarten, first, second grade on these old metal monkey bars that were this weird honeycomb shape. Um, so oh, the dome thing. The, the yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of like an igloo without the ice, but yes. uh, um, yes, yeah. Yes, I, yes. yes. Monkey bars. I'm about to, I'm about to trip your, uh, 
if your nostalgia meter here. Hold on. Hold on. Because we were talking about this a little while ago, and I was like, I forgot all about that thing until someone else said it. But you nailed it. This guy? Some of yep. Ooh. Oh yeah. They got them all funky shapes now. We I this remember as, I, remember I remember as a kid, a bunch of us got in trouble because we decided one day we were gonna play King of the Mountain on that thing. Oh yeah. I'm I'm old enough where I'm not positive that those bars weren't made out of lead. So <laughs> I uh, think, or the paint. I honestly think that the. Oh, I'm sure the paint was. <laughs> I, I am. I am old enough to say that I might have been of the last generation before those things got replaced by plastic. Yeah, yeah. And and look at these spoiled brats with their wood chips underneath. What do you need Royal wood chips for? Aluminum, just man. Wood chips. You give me gravel any day, baby. Yeah. Where's the where's the sandy, dusty Western floor that I'm used to? I want I want to see kids picking those fell. picking those stones out of their knee for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> the wood chips just give you splinters. Give me the rocks any day. Oh, whatever. You can, just, you can just brush those off. And even worse is now you see out in parks where it's not even wood chips; it's full on rubber flooring. It's like these are recycled tires. I'm like, you're just trying to you're just softening these kids up. But that's my first one. They you don't know what the world is. Just let them hurt sometimes. It's okay. You just learn not to climb stuff that's way out of your uh, out don't, of your station. Don't jump if you don't want to get hurt. <laughs> There's a well, lesson we, there. I mean, we used to have a, one last thing on these stupid this dome picture is still up. I forgot to take it down. Uh, <laughs> remember chicken fights where you would just oh, yeah. like on the monkey bars, like you and your friend would crawl up to each other, and then you would wrap your legs around his torso. Oh. We called then, we called it American Gladiator fights, <laughs> and then you would just try to pull your friend down. Yep. You also fell. Like, th what game is this? No, no kid under the age of ten has the kind of core and leg strength to take somebody off of those bars and not also fall. <laughs> you can't recover. I don't have grip strength for this. I, I, I think you guys grew up tougher than I did. So. We were we were weird kids. I can say, hey man, that. we we uh we New York, New Jersey kids. We uh we had to be tough. Otherwise, I, no, on. I lived in I lived in a, a rural suburban <laughs> town. There was I I I did nothing worthwhile from the borough <laughs> of P.O. Box. Uh... <laughs> the biggest thing about my hometown was we had a ski resort. Ooh. The hard the hard slopes. <laughs> you know me, man. I grew up on the streets of. I mean, they were they were paved, and yes. there were there was a lot of woods around them. There was a bike lane. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Matt, you're up. Okay. Um, all right. So we asked about your favorite playground equipment. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to say, um, if we're going with Midland America, the question that I have for you is: favorite fried carnival food. Ooh. He's deep in thought. He is deep in thought. Um, I have to narrate for the audio. <laughs> I actually, I actually earlier wanted to be like, for anyone who's only listening, the door behind Jeff keeps opening. He says it's a dog. I think it's a ghost. <laughs> you know, you be, you be the judge. I, I'm going to give the boring answer. I'm going to tell you probably a corn dog is uh, the way to go. It must have mustard must have mustard and that's are my people guy that won't agree with that and they would be wrong because there <laughs> is one way to have a corn dog i remember i have gotten into arguments before about whether or not you put mustard or ketchup on a corn dog and i have i my feeling is weirdly strong feeling this is a very white guy thing Mikey, so I'm I'm sorry if you feel ostracized. I was like, I was like, oh, corn dogs, the things from uh, TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I've heard of those. I think I've seen uh, those on the telly. Ketchup on a corn dog. All right, Mike, Mikey. I here's here's how I'm going to try and put it for you. Ketchup on I... a corn dog. This is the bland ass potato salad at a barbecue. Um. The, so stick hot dog batter fry. batter around it and then yeah. you're dipping it into ketchup and you have the ability to get some of that spicy brown mustard on there and you say no he didn't say brown mustard he said mustard 
Are we rocking the brown mustard or the yellow mustard? Um, typically at a fair, you're not going to find brown because that would be too upscale. You're going to find yellow. <laughs> all right. All right. My East is. Coast is showing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got over here? This is yeah, What is this? What is Hellman's? Get this out of here. Get this out of here. <laughs> Give me the Frenches, the Dijon. Give me the Frenches. Made in Joplin, Missouri. Thank you very much. Where is my radioactive yellow mustard? <laughs> I want to be able to make lines on my parking spot. With I need stuff. someone to see this corn dog from space. <laughs> this is an international intergalactic dog. <laughs> the 10 C's will see this. <laughs> I just finished Discovery. Um, sorry for the spoilers, people. All right, I guess that means I'm up. Since we're on the food thing, and I love this question more than any of my questions. That's why I keep repeating it. Sorry, repeat listeners. Get used to me. Um, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. You kind of need that little snack. Just a little little grumble in the tumble. So you're going you're gonna to sneak down, or you're, you're an adult. I'm the only one that sneaks in the, into the kitchen at night. I don't know why. It just feels cooler that way. But you go to the kitchen and you need a midnight snack. What is your go-to midnight snack? Well, I'm going to slightly change the conditions of your question here because it's pretty unusual that I would be awake at 2 a.m. Except because of the work that I do, it's not uncommon for me to get a phone call in the middle of the night. Student is transported to the hospital. Student is right. um, some sort of some sort of physical ailment or physical complaint or a concern that's occurred. Um, so I keep on stash Chip Ahoy's and Ooh. diet coke because sometimes you just need the sugar and sometimes you just need to have that rumbly and the tumbler taken care of so right. there is always and 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 it's uh a good pairing too it, well it is a good pairing it's got to be the blue chip ahoys i don't yeah. understand why they make the red i, I was, just I, I don't um and uh they're just you know. bad they're just they're just not good no one all wants right look this. i didn't come here to just get attacked by everybody else on the show. <laughs> Ripping you apart. You take, you take a red Chips Ahoy. You put oh, that in the microwave go. for about 30 seconds. Burn it's the soft. House down. It is warm. It is delicious. My one and only complaint here. I think it's. Is it General Mills? Who makes who makes Chippewas? I don't know. I think that is. I think that is. Remember, they used to yeah. come in the two single serving sleeves, and now they come in the plastic tray. Yep. They need to go back to the single serving sleeves that had you know twenty five in them because that I agree with absolutely. <laughs> That's see, we found common ground. There, there is we, always we have, common ground to be found. <laughs> we have found common ground, and people say that the coasts and the midland cannot get together. Can I propose one other? thing this is a food idea that i've been trying to get mainstream but no one will do the r d for me you know how like your deodorant stick has like that and you can like click it up mm -hmm. pringles mikey that's a fucking million dollar idea thank you if just, only gravity worked where you live no just you just like you know it just pushes them up like a push pop and there you then you go. just kind of so you don't have to because my paws don't always get in there. So then you gotta slide it, and then all the crumbs come first somehow. And then you get crumbs in your hand, and you get one chip, and you're like, "Well, I'll just do one of these." And then everybody looks at you with that exact second. And you look like a maniac with crumbs all in your beard, like <laughs> like like it's so ferocious. You have to look. Just like, look, Bo, Bur Bo Burnham did an entire song about how infuriating it is to get your hand stuck in a Pringle can. It's because you th you really think you can like I can get it. No, I'm you fine. Can't. If I if I just if I just if I just yeah, I'll be fine. Yeah, I'm. Everyone and else, you realize stuck, you're not, not eleven anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Everything is the wrong size now. I'd like to be small again. <laughs> All right, Matt. All right. Last one. Last one. Uh, Jeffrey, because later in the episode, we are going to be dealing with a uh, topic about Stranger Things. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have uh, watched the show, if you've seen the latest season of it at all, anything like that. All right. I'll try to keep it vague. I've seen, episode, I, I've seen season one. So okay, I that's do fine. Know, I do okay. know that I'll, I'll keep this enough. vague for you because I don't want to give away the context of why I'm asking. Okay. But this is it. If you could pick one song that is so 
important to you, you think it could save your life, what song would you go with? Well, my most played song on my phone is Boomer Sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Because I graduated from there. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, um, I, I, I marched in the band. I played the song four times a week. I got to do it with musically talented people. I Ooh, love what'd it. What did you play? A trombone. Trombone. So uh, I was there during uh, during the uh, Brian Fellow Bosworth Br years, during the uh, Keith Jackson years. We won two national championships while I was there. Hell yeah. Great, great time. So, um, so I would say that that's probably the song that... Uh, is going to most invigorate me out of some sort of coma situation. If you're looking for me to uh, come to, you're you're catching up. You're catching my drift here. You're you catching go. my drift. He's picking up what you're putting down. Hell yeah, Mikey. Um, I want to know your answer too. Um, I didn't know I was going to be the target of the next round of attacks. Yeah. Um, um, well, I'm sorry, Mike. It it you said it was four down, but you also did not say that I wasn't allowed to just spray across the crowd. Okay. Fair I enough. shouldn't say that. That's that's Yikes. I I cut that cut that cut that cut edit, that yeah, cut that edit, cut that edit pause for edit. Uh pause for edit. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um Mikey, you say, didn't say I couldn't ask you. <laughs> uh we just run the whole thing, right? Say it again on accident. Um my song. I don't know, because I got I got some bangers rolling through the head here. Mm -hmm. It's gotta it's gotta be MJ. It's Okay, absolutely. It's got to be MJ. So I'm trying to think of the MJ song. Are you are you a bad era boy or are you going with uh are you going with Thriller era? Off the wall. Off the wall. Damn, good choice. Good choice. That was there I cannot. I am physically incapable of being still while that song is on. Can't do it. Put a million dollars in front of me. Jurist. I can't I, respect I, I can't, that. I can't do what you're asking me to do. Hey man. My I'm I'm never one who's going to try and make somebody not enjoy the things they love. It is it is uh it is a a, a a no small wonder that my very first cassette that I bought with my money. Not no, oh you can pick out something. No. I saved and saved to go to Tower Records and buy Michael Jackson's Off the Wall on cassette for like $7.99. I only had $8, so my mom had to give me the change. Um, <laughs> Your <but> money. <laughs> taxation is theft, and we all know it. We, we all agree with that, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> um, we fought a war about taxation, and then we imposed it on ourselves. I can't I can't even vote. I couldn't vote at that age, so I shouldn't be paying fucking sales tax. Stop, stop <laughs> fleecing the babies. I didn't do nothing. Um, but uh, I used to play it in my my Nickelodeon boombox. There you go. The what? The one that's like orange and green with the big stupid play button. Yes. Yep. Oh I, yes, absolutely. I got, I got that, and then like I was like, I don't even have any tapes. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to listen to the radio, and that was that was whack. So then I tried to borrow stuff from my sister, and that wasn't happening. So I saved my money, and I got Michael Jackson off the wall. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. And then CDs came out like two weeks later. And I was like, sorry guys, tape gang over here. You can keep that shit. Yep. I, got, I just got me a new tape. No, it's, it's not gonna it's not gonna take off. It's not gonna take off. This that that hip hop thing. Lasers? Gonna... No. Yeah. yeah. No. You're just gonna sell Ain't people gonna lasers now? Just gonna give them out to people. Just give lasers to the public? I don't think so. Sure. Military won't let that happen. Flying cars will be next. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, that is the one letdown of my of my childhood is that the flying cars never showed up. Isn't I mean, this like the year that George Jetson was supposed to be alive? Right? I mean, absolutely. he got fired like two weeks ago. According yeah. according <laughs> to uh, according to Blade Runner, we should have had flying cars three years yeah. ago. Yeah. Well, when when was um Back to the Future the second? Twenty fifteen, actually. You're right. So that's even mm -hmm. that's even earlier. So I'm seven years late on my hover boots. My, yeah. my, my, I know that. <laughs> Oh, what kind of trivia god are you? No, 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 no. All right, Jeff, Jeff, welcome to the show, man. I everything. I know things that are so unimportant 
<laughs> in everyday life at a moment's notice. I have, I have all of the, the like infinite is, ether of like useless cloud, information at my like fingertips. You have to go ahead and run for office because you know things that will help people. I know the year that Back to the Future 2 takes place in, <laughs> and that's pretty much it. <laughs> That's all I got going for me right now. Um, let's I'm doing great, on. guys. I'm doing great. I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm not, I don't struggle. <laughs> um, so, Jeff, tell us a bit about North Dakota, because, like, what's going on in your state that's inspiring you to run? Like, tell us a little bit about what's what's going on up there. We don't hear oh. a lot from you guys. So, um, yeah, so I am running for Secretary of State. Secretary of State really does four specific things. The first is that um, it's the office that manages all of the business filings. So if you're a real okay. estate agent, if you're a car, if you're a, car a carpenter, if you're a contractor, um, if you need a business license, once a year you go online, you register, you pay a little bit of fee, and so it's it's a records keeping sort of thing. The second thing that Secretary of State does is to make sure that the elections are fair. And in that capacity, the, the Secretary of State supervises a county auditor in all 53 of the counties that we have. The third is to do some um, constitutional stuff related to some of the programs, the, some of the committees that we have. For example, you know, the Historical Society would be one of those, the land grant um, okay. committee that decides some of the, the funding that are related to that. And so it's, it's this kind of job that, um, you don't get people who can talk about going to see Michael Jackson off the wall, um, necessarily. Um, you know, you got to be a little bit of a dork, a little bit of a geek to want to do it. And so, um, I, I, as an, as an administrator and as an academic person, um, this sort of policy role, this sort of make sure the railroad runs on time sort of thing really does appeal to me. I do care about my state. I want to make sure that we are, um, doing things that are going to help us move forward. I have a daughter that just graduated from college and um, couldn't find a job here in the state that was something that she wanted to do. So she's living in Madison. So the people of the state basically paid for public school for my kid, helped with the roads that my kid drove on, yeah. um, you know, participated in her growing up, made sure that she got to go to a land grant school. And now she's paying taxes in another state because we've not provided the good opportunities for our students here, for our kids here. And a lot of that has to do with kind of this red state state politics that we're so involved in. If we could get rid of the notion that abortion is something that the government ought to be in charge of, if we could do a better job at treating our tribes um, in a fair and equitable way, if we could do some things that would drive us back to where the rest of the country is in terms of treating people decently and respecting equal rights, then we would have a better chance at keeping some of our students who are from here, here. And that's something that the Secretary of State can influence. And that's one thing that they're they're just now starting to freak out about here in Illinois is the mass exodus. Right. Everyone is leaving. I think the last numbers it were at almost like 10,000 10, families a year. Yeah. Are are dipping for like the la over the like the last 5 or 6 years because the taxes are so crazy. The politics <clears throat> crooked <clears throat> crooked <clears throat> Illinois. <laughs> uh, Chicago Dailies <clears throat> Lightfoot <clears throat> <clears throat> Rahm Emanuel <clears throat> uh, Blagojevich uh, we've had our struggles and it's Mikey, just, your allergies are real bad, man. I'm I'm on the Claritin, but it ain't working yet. I got a way to, I think it's I, I've, it. I've heard it doesn't clear up the Blagojevich very yeah. easily. <laughs> you got to take it, Nothing but the, like the does. next day you feel good. Nothing takes care of that. <laughs> well, Trump did because he gave him a pardon. So he took care of him. All right. Whoop. He, he took Whoop. care of his, Whoop, took hot care take. Of his buddy, his buddy, old pal. Um, but I'm I'm glad to hear that you actually want people to stay in the state that they're from, because that would be a nice thing. Like I would love to still live in Missouri, but they're kind of crazy down there. And then I like I'm up here and I'm like, oh y'all really like to take all the money out the bank account, don't you? Whew. So so me and the wife are definitely looking for new places to live, and you're expressing concern over the things that really got us looking other places. And, you know, and I'll tell yeah, you guys from. 
Yeah, we moved no, here. Go 18, ahead, Jeff. Go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 no. We moved here 18 years ago. Um, you know, we had one kid that was uh, literally 11 weeks old. We had a kid that was ready for first grade. We had, you know, another that was in between them. And this has been a terrific place. You know, the 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 opportunities for kids in our little town of 60,000 people um, have been terrific. Oh, that is little. Um, yeah, it, it's true. There's a university in town. So there's, you know, a, a bevy of folks that are closer to our political viewpoint. So we get to spend some time with thing, with, with those folks. But the, but also just the support for growing up. Um, I, we get a lot of crap for how cold it is. But I got to tell you, you've never smelled clean air until you smelled until you smell the air at minus 25, because there ain't nothing there except the air. So it is a delightful feeling. And I know that sounds weird if you haven't lived it. But uh, I, I don't want to leave. But I want to make sure that it's better. And leaving things better than they were when you found them has to be one of the principles that we have as human beings. I agree. And And I I will say as I'll say as somebody who's out on the coasts, um, don't come here. (laughs) Uh, And and, and it's, it's not meant to be in like a mean, like we don't want you sort of sense. It's like, look, man, the prices of things out on the coast are not better. They are worse. We have like, we might have the ports that are coming in from the seas so maybe gas prices are a little bit lower now compared to like june but beyond that housing is never going to be at a better rate you are never going to be able like taxation is going to be at a a wild rate the fact that jersey sales tax has not gone up in a long time is only because we are so goddamn stubborn like it's it's leaving leaving midland america because you're trying to find a better spot for for living i hate to say it like i understand why because you're trying to flee things in such as a way of like like red state politics but you're you're heading out into an area where yeah maybe people think like you do but they're paying two to three times the amount that you do just to live life but you guys also you guys also make two to three times more than we do Yes, and you know what the other problem with that is? I'm going to pause for a second, okay? I'll be right back. Go go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was going to say the the problem that you run into with that is that the, the, the cost of living is up, the price of what you're being able to be paid is up, but it is also in a situation where you have to fight to get into the positions where you're making that kind of money. Yeah, we're going to under, we're going to we're going to undercut all of you guys. Yeah. It is and that's that's the problem is because as you are then moving out here whether it's east coast whether it's west coast or whatever you're going to find so many people who are willing to exploit anybody that will work for midland america pricing right and then the problem is is that yeah okay so you got the job you were willing to take less money because uh, it's the same you were making when you were living out in north dakota or you know illinois but also you are so fucking house poor that it is struggling to be able to get by. And by the time that you're set up, you're making that money and you're living in that house to then turn around and be like, Oh wait, I I should have asked for like a third more than I'm making. You have no leg to stand on because you're already there. And that's why everybody goes and then they come back and then they go and then they come back. You never stay. It's like the tides. No one knows how those work. (laughs) The moon. (laughs) Uh, it looks like he still needs a second. Let me see if I can find this clip real quick. Sure. Um, about this uh, freight thingy. Oh, is uh, this the thing that Dutch was talking about uh, oh, earlier? We'll, we'll wait for him to pop in oh, later. There we, go. there we go. Just back. Oh, no, he has changed Jeff. locations. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're uh, in the middle of the night, so uh, I just needed to change locations. That's all. Perfectly fine. Oh, cool. Did you get yelled at? No, no, that's not how grownups do things. I got yelled at earlier today, but my wife is Jeffrey. Pregnant. I'm yeah. trying to sleep. You go into the fucking office. Yeah. Get in your office. Yeah, you're not supposed to be in your office. Um, no, no, no. We're we're at, we're at ten thirteen. So the first segment of the news is done, and so uh, you know it's it's time for gotcha. bed. So, About gotcha. that time. Because gotcha. uh, I, 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 hey, East Coast guy, do you know how uh, Central Time Zone works? <laughs> dude i'm at 11 15 myself all right i'm i i had i had to i had to drop some coffee in me in the middle of the day to make sure that i was i was ready for this nice does everybody not stay up till 7 a.m every day bro 
I no, find I get you, so much work done between like 12 and seven. You and I do, but also I don't work. In, I, I currently don't work in a sector that allows that. <laughs> I so mean, I get, I get I, to go to bed after this show and wake up four hours later and be <laughs> miserable. Oh my. The American dream. That's right. So <laughs> we all, it's what we're all fighting for. Um, so uh, with, the uh native population there um yep. uh, what are some issues that um that from as the secretary of state that you can kind of address for them so we have three federally recognized tribes who have reservations within the state um two of the three of those are in new legislative districts that were drawn specifically to help those tribes put one member of the house into the house of representatives so okay. part of this was um, uh, actually a pretty cool um, concept. One of those three tribes did not get that same sort of setup. And so there is a lawsuit that's currently in front of our state Supreme Court that's trying to decide whether it was um, a good way or a bad way to do the, the redrawing of the districts. And um, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens from that court case. But we do have three federally recognized tribes. One of the things that happened in 2014 was one of the things that happened in 2012 was we had a Democratic um, senator who won in 2012, um, Heidi Heitkamp. And so in 2014, the Republicans decided that they needed to change the rules a little bit to make it harder for Democrats <laughs> to win. There may be a different way to phrase that. And so if you can find a different way, I'm all for it. Um, oh, cheating. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, I believe the word um, is gerrymandering. Mike. <laughs> well, it's it's not gerrymandering when you only have the state, um, it, it, but it is it is in fact voter suppression is is the phrase. Larry, that I Larry um, mandering. Yes, we have we have um, a voter ID requirement like a lot of red states do. Um, one of the things that the legislature put into our um, the. the, the license rule or our id rule is that your street address has to be on the license and you can't use a p.o box and um, i don't know if you've spent time on american indian reservations but typically you have something that looks very much like an old west general store that people get their mail in one central location and yeah. then once a week when they come to town once a week when they come to to the store they grab their mail while they're there i mean it looks like you know Rob Morrow on uh, on uh, Northern Exposure. I mean, you know, it's, it's this it's this uh, this frontiersy sort of feeling. And so, um, many members of the tribes on the reservations literally didn't have a mailing address, and right. so roll into the next election, and they're denied the right to vote because their ID doesn't match the state requirements. Now, the cool thing. Oh come on! I no know way. how convenient. Oh come on! Yeah. It was a uh, anyway. A judge got involved, yes, and good. the judge, um, the judge helped us clarify some of what needed to be on there so that there wouldn't be any question. We got the E nine one ones involved, and then there was some private money that came in as donations. And so now everybody has an address. That address may be where they live, and um, you know there are times where a family imagine somebody that's. Um, functionally homeless. And so he lives with one family for three weeks and then a different right. family for two weeks. Um, that person still needs to have an address in order to vote. And so um, there are there are some workarounds. There are probably some um, issues that uh, um, probably haven't come about the way that they thought they were, but we ended up winning so that people in the state are still able to vote. Here's the thing that I want to do. We have a pretty good um, early voting system. Really, again, when you have a judge that gets involved, you get some of the stuff that you really ought to have, um, despite not being a progressive state. And so um, we have um, early voting, which every county commission has the opportunity to exercise. What I want to do is to make sure that the tribes just get to manage their own early voting. 
Um, there's no reason they already have, there's no reason to say no to this. They already have the structure set up. They already have the governance. Um, the county commission could give a week for anybody to early vote. And so, um, what I want to do is to let the tribal governments just be responsible for setting up their early voting system so that when that family comes to town, they don't have to come on the right Tuesday. If they were there at any point right. during the previous week, they're going to be able to show their ID so they're compliant and to prove that they actually live so that they're compliant. I'm not trying to cheat any of the rules here. I'm just trying to change the way that we respond to how a segment of our population lives their lives. And I think that making voting accessible is an important, critical part of anybody who's responsible for the voting system of your state. That, 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 wild, that wild notion will never take off. If I let everybody vote, I might lose. So uh, I just want my friends to vote. Damn, skippy. <laughs> question, question I have from that, Jeff, uh, yeah. is that is that essentially trying to uh, utilize the uh, vote by mail system in order to benefit? So 26 of our 43 counties are vote by mail counties. So if you mm -hmm. look at Oregon, if you look at Utah, more than half of our counties actually just mail out Nobody gets mailed a ballot, but everybody automatically gets mailed the ballot application. Gotcha. And says, you know, okay. hey, hey, Bob and hey, Susie at, you know, 102 George Street, would you like your ballots? And you sign it and you mail it in because it's got to cost 58 cents. And then you get your ballot and you fill it out and you mail it because everybody's got to pay 58 cents. And um, and then it gets counted. And so um, half of our counties have chosen to do that. And it's the right thing to do for a lot of our places. But we also, again, have this early voting opportunity. And part of that is driven by how large a community you have, or you have the regular stand in line on Tuesday sort of voting. We have all three kinds and um, different places get to use it differently. And isn't choice actually a really good thing? One of the one of the two guys I'm running against, because I'm running against two guys, one of the two guys I'm running against wants to get rid of drop boxes like Wisconsin tried to do, wants to get rid of early voting. He believes that if you don't stand in line and make it a long line on Tuesday, then you haven't really voted. And, you know, I, I, I don't know who's going to rush to that sort of hooray. Oh. That's the policy I want, except for a very small segment. And I bet I can identify some characteristics of those people. What I mean, what, what say you, you what uh, what what say you about I, I, I this is another one of my my schemes. Can election day just be a federal holiday already? Mikey, you bite your tongue. How dare you? I hear that. But really, election month should be election month. We shouldn't have a yes. day. It should be a month. And, Take the whole and, month off. Well, and... and oh. Oh. <laughs> you know, Mikey, let the man talk before you celebrate. I to, when I go to Albertson, I should be able to vote when I'm at Albertson. Or, you know, pick pick yeah. two or three places. They shouldn't have to be places that are hard to get to. Yeah. I don't know why there's not a drop box in front of every grammar school in the state so that you can just fill it out. And when you're walking your kids to school, you drop it off. Or, I mean, why it's do we easy. make it so? I, I know the answer to this rhetorical question. <laughs> Why do we make it so hard now? <laughs> now, Jeffrey, you're you're talking with uh, what I would like to call, and I know this is a dirty word around here. Easy. A lot of sense. Hey, hey, you're on thin ice. You're on thin ice, Mister. Hey, hey, yeah, uh, uh, watch your counselor. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's I a hundred percent. I agree with you in the fact that like it, the it's, bench. Uh, uh, <laughs> it it is very much and very clear as we have seen in the past not even just the previous 2020 election, but even back to 2016. Yeah. How, and and these are just the, the, the big general elections, not even dealing with midterm or anything like that. The, 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 the fact that we have seen so much that has been put into just creating a, a, an environment in which voting becomes the biggest, just inconvenience right. to the regular citizen. No matter who you are, what you look like, where you're from, for everybody, except for a very small margin That's, of people. What are you talking about? It's the same for everybody. Who have the ability to either, you know, not go to work on a Tuesday. 
I had don't Charles. Don't have work on I Tuesday. had Charles. You mean me we chose an election place that isn't on the public bus route? Golly gee oh, willikers. How wow. did that possibility escape us as a way for people to get here? It's what right there. What were we thinking? It, I can only vote at the country club that's inside of a gated community. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Oh. Go on, that never happens. <laughs> <laughs> the polling station is just a guy on a horse, and you just gotta you gotta catch him. If you, you see him, you gotta be ready for it. We've got to we've we've got to figure out ways that we're and and this is this is a local issue. This isn't a federal issue. This may not even be a state issue. You've got to have ways for your community to vote, but you also have to make sure that you're not excluding members of your community by figuring out ways that are going to make it harder for the people that you're afraid of voting, voting. I don't know that I'm crazy about the election day holiday because I don't want to think of this as a one day thing. Yeah. It's like saying I'm pro-choice. Pro-choice isn't a decision you make once. Reproductive freedom is the decision that you make over the course of your lifetime. Elections shouldn't be one day. Elections are a process. And any of the 28 days before we decide that we're going to count should be fair game in terms of making sure that you get to cast your ballot. I, I, no, you were, I think we're both uh, singing the same song. Election month. 28 federal holidays in a row no work he is right nobody he has to right, go anywhere he, we're chilling paid days off <laughs> because you know what i got a lot to think about i don't need the pressures of and stresses of life influencing my vote let me think can you now, just let me think now jeff i have minute? a question for you yeah. That's very, very, it's very <laughs> serious. You know, we've been having some fun, but I got to get very serious. With you. Yeah, okay. How much does it suck having to make election commercials? Oh, that is a serious question. My problem isn't making them. My problem is funding them. But if you go to pal4nd.com, you'll find an opportunity. Put it in the to, chat. Oh, put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. He's good. He's good. Um, yeah. Typical politician avoiding the question. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Hello, Tim. I didn't avoid. I said I don't mind them. I was asked, "Do they that's, suck?" And I do said, they I suck? And he them. said, "Yeah, no, not, not so much." That's that's called yeah. a pivot. That's called a pivot. Yes. He pivoted. Not, I specifically asked making a, a making them. I did not ask about funding them. So, as a <laughs> as a person who's written a dissertation and as a person who works in an academic setting, I will say. I'm not particularly good at putting in 40 words when 300 will do. Mm. And to your question about making commercials, I think that's the hard part is uh, that is, is awesome. I don't there know that you is. need the S even. I don't think it's that super secret, but that's awesome. Keep it safe. Um, keep it safe. So <laughs> keep it safe. Um, I, I think shaping a message is, is an important part. And I, I I remember somebody made a comment once when Rush Limbaugh was first starting to get popular. So this was 25 years ago, probably. Um, oh they made the point that it's easier for messages of hate, messages of oppression, messages of fear to be condensed into smaller words or smaller numbers of words, smaller word count, than it is for messages of openness, messages of acceptance, messages of tolerance. That you need. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh oh, uh -oh. he's getting, uh -oh. getting too Jeff. close to the truth. Je Jeff, Jeff, Jeff is. <laughs> oh no! Need to get an agent the, out there. The NSA yeah. got him. You froze up on us, Jeff. I froze up. Uh oh. You're so back. getting to messages that are about tolerance, about acceptance, about um, helping our society sometimes have to be longer than uh, messages of hate, messages of fear, and so um, that makes it a hard part of doing commercials. Absolutely. I can I can fully see that because it's it's very easy to say this person is the problem versus well, this person's not the problem. The problem stems from a long list of systematic issues that we've been dealing with over the course of 20 years built off the back of which this person is happy to take advantage of and to exploit and to continue. But they're not the cause. All right. Let me give my laser pointer. Hold on, guys. All right. So if you look here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if everyone will uh, uh now here. this line yes. represents so here's how to read this chart 
That's what I always <laughs> love. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, oh right, my so, god! You so gotta decode this. For I me. got I got a bar graph here, but in order for you guys to understand that, I need to tell you about the the boxer rebellion. Huh. Now, <laughs> my fourteen point step to helping yeah. with the election process in a state of seventy of seven hundred thousand people. Now, um, now, step one has about thirteen sub-steps. broken different <laughs> substances here. Bullets. There's fourteen hold on, bullets. Hold on. Let me bring up my Excel spreadsheet. Oh, this no. will explain it very uh, clearly. Nope. 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 That's all. That's we're not even in the green section yet. Let me get to the yellow. <laughs> nice. I don't know how to zoom. <laughs> and enhance. Nope. Man, that's what I should have gone with. I just I had to answer a um uh one of the things nobody tells you when you run for office is you get all these surveys because mm-hmm. everybody wants to you know know just how Rudy Tootie conservative or just how whatever you are. So you get all these surveys that you feel can, like you can say airheaded leftist, Jeff. It's fine. We accept <laughs> it. We're not ashamed anymore. I'm not ashamed. So so you're <laughs> filling out all these surveys and um um. I tried to make the point that the two guys I'm running against are not as software compliant or software savvy as I am given my job. And I made reference to the fact that, you know, they're not even really good at Facebook. Zoom would have been funnier. Mikey, where were you last week? (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Zoom would have been funnier. You know, you know, I mean, all I'm saying, Jeff, is our rates are reasonable. (laughs) I can get with me after this <laughs> all right i am now following you on twitter and all of you listeners and viewers should too at dr jeffrey powell so let me copy and throw it in the chisnet so oh, I, that's, here. That's, the, that's the account that i started back in 2011 when twitter was first starting and uh, i didn't want to give it up so i decided to use it as my campaign which meant that I needed to go in and remove a few messages regarding some of our leadership um, to make sure that I, uh, but uh, I hadn't announced yet. So I I didn't destroy any records before I was actually a candidate, but uh, um, you know, a lot of sports stuff, a lot of little kids stuff and uh, a whole lot of politics. So, but uh, Jeff, the big question I have to ask is uh, what about your emails? Well, (laughs) yeah. Why do you have that server in your house? (laughs) very much like Hillary, about one fifth of my emails are either from Papa John's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm just saying they and, have great garlic butter. And the fact that somebody went in and removed all of the promotion emails out of her account and now they're tissy about it is really just ridiculous, I think. So Food we want to for- know what kind of deal are you getting on cheesy bread, <laughs> Senator? <laughs> So oddly, You're in the roof, by the way. oddly enough that you say this, we have an attorney general in our state who died about 18, 19 months ago. Mm-hmm. Somebody went in two days later and ordered the IT department to destroy every one of his emails. Now, wow. I don't know if any of you have ever worked in state government or if any of you have ever um, paid attention to some of the records retentions that state governments have, but that is wildly illegal. Mm -hmm. And um, we can't get the current attorney general to act on it. Um, It is, it is, I get that sometimes my party's going to win and sometimes my party's going to lose, but I'm really frustrated whenever I'm looking at the other side of the aisle, just being comfortable with that kind of corruption, with that kind of blatant violation of the law and just letting it go. Golly gee willikers, all the emails are destroyed. What could we possibly do to the person that ordered it? Because the the emails are gone. I mean, not it's, it's not like it's They're not like not. the internet has a record of things. <laughs> you, you keep and thinking so, they're gone all you want. You can it's not that. like it's not like Google keeps every single Gmail email <laughs> in a bunker somewhere. And so one of crazy. the frustrations that we are having and, and, you know, obviously I'm keen enough to understand we are the minority party in the state and that mm-hmm. we don't have anybody that's in that executive house. Although I think that there should be at least one because you got to have somebody that's on the other team in order to make sure that everybody's honest. But yeah. uh, what what's going on right now is they're just they're letting it go. And it is wrong. I mean, this guy apparently had rented a facility off 
the grounds of the Capitol for about 3.8 million bucks. He had some renos that were done to it for about 2 million bucks. And there's no record of how he entered into these agreements. And um, I mean, it's, it's real money. You can complain about every kid that tried college and it didn't work out and they're stuck with $11,000 in student debt and they're working at Chick-fil-A and their life is really worse, not better because they went to college. And those folks just got sprung a little bit. And we're giving away 6 million bucks to a guy that just made some deals and it's getting covered up because the guy died. The, the, the corruption in our government isn't the kid that's getting ten thousand dollars in student loan resettlement or or, 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 right. or really? refunded off. It's it's all these other. It's the PPP money. It's the subsidies that you know that that people get. The the crazy corporate welfare that is a part of our nation um, is where all of the wealth is going, and we're not making our society better. We're making it worse. It's. What I think is is an interesting aspect that I have noticed in the past four to six years, especially since we've had to deal with a Trump presidency and and seeing just more and more as I get older of these these high level, very wealthy people involved in politics is the concept of just how little so many of these people who get into this game really understand or even respect the concept of the money they deal with yeah you know to to the stupidest degree of a story that came out last week about uh lawyer says that trump owed him two million dollars he tried to give him a horse yeah. as a payment the horse was and worth five and it's the idea of just seeing somebody who turns around and goes like well you owe me two million dollars uh well what about this horse that that's the same value right <laughs> Yeah. No, walk, walk it is me. not, walk and it never me. will be. Walk with me, talk with me, and he just starts yeah. walking to the stable. He's like, "See this? <laughs> Slap! What's you can fit see? a whole two million dollars into this student into this stud. This horse can pull it, several million dollars." It's the idea of just the uh, the concept that you have people who are so used to dealing with money at such an exorbitant amount that they don't even recognize what it actually is valued at. And dealing in a, in, in a company that I work with where we, we deal with sales in construction and stuff in the New York area, where it took me so long to just shed the idea of $1,000 is a lot of money to me. But in the world of business, in the world of, of corporations, a thousand dollars is going to be $600,000. Yeah, $1,000 is bullshit to them. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and so to turn screws, they spent a thousand dollars on screws for the project. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a, it's so, a forty so gallon drum. To, to then yeah. see the idea where you have you have people who are involved in in state level, you know, up to national level government, where the idea of like we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on things that either a don't matter or b are literally just to make other people agree with us when it comes right. time for that to work. And to notice just how often that's never spoken of, that's never dealt with, and it's never looked at because that's just, quote, how it works. Right. And then in this sort of an instance where, 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 you know, that Jeff's talking about, where it's like, oh, somebody who was in that position passed away. And the first thing we need to do is just make sure that nobody ever notices that that's what's happened. Yeah. It's, uh, it's this is why you need, you know, I, I don't live in North Dakota. I'm not going to be able to vote for Jeff. But well, this is why you, in my opinion, someone like Jeff with that kind of mindset is invaluable to that kind of a system. Well, Jeff's making a strong case because I, I'm already I'm used to the cold already. I've been in Chicago for like the last umpteen years. <laughs> and, and thanks for the polar vortex, by the way, Jeff. I appreciate you sending that express a few years back when it was negative 52 degrees. And my car broke. Controlling how the jet stream goes around the Arctic Circle is uh my is my game, man. I'm I'm all about it. So he's up there with he's up there with his. You magnets. heard it here, folks. You heard it here. The Democrats control the weather. The Democrats yep. control the weather. Where are they hiding the weather machine? Where are you hiding the weather machine? <laughs> it's it, it's it's absolutely in in uh, Alaska, isn't it? Because nobody goes there. I mean, I mean, North Dakota has a lot of open space. Couple of hills. I mean, you put it in a valley. You can't see it from the highway. I'm still, I'm still 100 <laughs> behind my theory that uh, Wyoming is not a state. 
it doesn't exist and the government is just lying to us about it no one's ever been there no state back. is a square an exact <laughs> square. i've had a speeding ticket there so i know it exists so. damn it jeff i was pulling for you too man jeff has been to the other side <laughs> jeff has seen beyond the veil <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tim, you you you've run for offices. Did you have any questions for Mr. Powell? Uh, so you're running for Secretary of State. I am. All right. Uh, Good question. You already talked about yeah yeah. You already <laughs> talked about uh, early voting and stuff like that. But um, in the state I live in, in Connecticut, we have a public financing system for our statewide elections. Oh, I know. Uh, how would you feel about a similar program? For the state of uh, North Dakota? Well, if you go to powell4nd.com and look at the tab that says better laws, one of the five initiatives that I have included is a um, project where we could look at public finance. One of the things that I think is um, true in every state is that people are frustrated at how long their folks get into office and sit in office. And so on our ballot yeah. this November, there is a publicly led petitioned ballot question that is on um, term limits for legislators and for some levels of state government. So if I were to win, I could run one more time in four years, but I could not run again in eight years because I could only be a two term person in that role. I've never been a fan of um, term limits. And I, I will tell you that I got this from George Will. George Will, back probably 35 years ago, made the argument that term limits are a bad idea. That's why we have elections. But what we need to do is to make sure that the elections are fair. And the way to make elections fair are to do public financing. I don't think that your ballot should say R or D. I think it should say participate. I, I lived in Connecticut at one point. I most recently oh. lived in Maine. Maine has what they call clean campaigns. So it's the yep. same notion. Yep. I want the ballot. I want the ballot to say participated in clean campaign or rejected the clean campaign. Because Ooh. then I'm going to know Ooh. whether the guy ran on money that he got from oil industries or whether the woman did it because she's like, you know what, I will take a lesser amount but I'm going to make sure that it came from the people of the state and came with some certain conditions that it wasn't going to be corporate PAC. Hell and yeah. So, I like that. I, I, love I like that. Ooh. I think that's, that's the best answer I've ever gotten for that question. <laughs> Play it on B roll, man. Yeah. <laughs> Just on November 7th. <laughs> I am well, if on you, you know, my way to you, North Dakota right now, baby. Back up the need anyone to help you. Uh, if you ever need anyone to help you flesh out policy ideas give me a call because my thesis was on Maine and Connecticut's public financing programs for my master's. That sounds great. Oh, you missed that part. Uh, uh, Jeff is a uh, administrator at the college or you still teach at the college? I, I am an administrator. I yeah. hardly oh. ever teach. So. Well, I, I recently got my uh, master's in political science. Look nice. at him. At Maine or at Connecticut? Uh, Connecticut at uh, Southern Connecticut State University. Oh, nice, nice. So my first job out of grad school was up in stores. And then uh, I moved to the West for a little okay. bit. And then I did a stint at uh, University of Maine up in Orono. And uh, I've lived in seven states since I graduated with my bachelor's degree. But I've lived here for 18 years. So uh, more than half of that time has been in one house, one place. I don't know, man. I think a lot, I think a lot of academic folks move around a little bit the first three, yeah. four years. of Yeah. Uh, so you see, Mikey, you didn't tell me I was going to be coming in here and and just basking in the glory of my people, these academics. I mean, I'm here with my BA in communications, <laughs> which you know, just I don't want to brag too much about. But uh... <laughs> um, I have a doctorate in uh, from the School of Hard Knocks. Uh, I don't know. Was that it? Was that in? Th was that in a uh, 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 thugonomics, Mikey? Um, I also double majored in thug life and gin and juice. Uh, uh, is that is that an accredited university? What are you a cop? Uh, you, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna cut this, cut this, cut this, cut this. You know, it's a, you know if you're a cop, you gotta tell me you're a cop. You gotta, That's a you gotta tell me if you're a cop. <laughs> oh well. Uh, this is all know. the time we had for Tim Bristol. Tim, thank you for joining. <laughs> oh, looks like Tim's signal is. Fading away. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh, you know oh, that's a shame. I hate to see it. I hate to see it. <laughs> I hate kicking people off the thing, but I had to do it for the joke. 
Um, I thought I thought I thought you said that you uh you 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 vetted everybody who comes on this podcast. Uh, I would, but I smoke weed. Um, is weed legal in North Carolina, North Dakota? There is a medical provision. There's a couple of hoops you got to jump through, but weed is also on the ballot in November. So Ooh. I don't know how. So I'm a Democrat running in a state where Democrats typically take about 36 percent of of the vote. I'm running against two guys, one who is um, as straight laced as they come, but is conservative. And I'm talking about a little bit over the crazy line, conservative. Like and I'm running style. against a guy who is not straight laced and is also over the crazy line of the conservative piece. So I'm the only pro-choice guy. I'm not uncomfortable with weed. I think that voting should be an American experience and shouldn't be taken away just because people want to make it harder. If I can't win this time around, then um, I'm really worried because I'm running against two guys that everyone should be afraid of. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to ask you here, Jeff. Um, yes or no? Uh, <laughs> shot in the dark here. One of them is named Roger. No. Damn. Thought I had that. <laughs> okay. It was a hey, big risk, big reward. Yeah. No, I, I get that. Yeah, Michael right. and Charles. Michael, Michael and Charles. Charles Michael is pretty, Charles. pretty. Yeah, I can see that. The King of England. <laughs> Classic. He, <laughs> he, he just apple, can't have he one, can he? He's in uh, Devil's Lake, Nebraska, uh, Devil's Lake, North Dakota. But uh... <laughs> all right, let's do. Um, we're gonna we're gonna let you go. But I, here's your website, uh, Powell4ND.com. Give the people one last elevator pitch, and then we will cut you loose. I'm a 30 year educator. I'm used to doing policy. I'm used to being fair. I'm used to making sure that rules are followed, but that uh, grace is also offered. I care about elections and I want to make sure that the people of the state are well represented when they go to the ballot box. I love oh, it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, Jerry, yes, thanks. thank you so much for joining us. Um, all of you video people, we will see you guys in a minute. But for all of you audio people, uh, this has been Dig on America. Thank you, Tim and Matt, for joining us. This is Mikey Famine. We will see you guys next time. Bye. Happy evening, folks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Jeff.